Hey guys, we're here with another new product from the Simrel collection. I was super stoked uh, when Austin announced this. For those of you who are really into concentrates and find the Dynavap lacking in that department, this is definitely the way to go. Um, this is the full engine, the full thing from Simrel, from tip to mouthpiece. Everything you see here is Simrel, so it's a big uh, change up from needing some other things to make uh, Simrel stem work. Construction wise, look wise, impressions right off the bat was this thing looks kind of crazy. I uh, thought it really looked like a Sputnik satellite prong thing. I don't know. I liked the fins. A uh, shout out to, you know, just uh, how we are used to seeing things against the body. Some good symmetry here with the fins up near the head. I mean, I, I really like the way this thing just looks aesthetically so then some of you might be asking like what is this crazy looking thing well bare bones it's a nectar collector dab straw type device however this really changed those weird nectar collectors um which is an easy example to show you because his head is interchangeable but we'll get to that in a second a standard nectar collector looked basically something like this, just a straw that you uh, would heat up with a torch and then you would stick into some concentrate materials to vaporize. But the, the issue you'd always have with those is you'd be heating up this tiny metal straw with a torch and then it would be a race. You'd have to get it super hot and then jam it into your concentrate jar and some would be burnt, some would be vaporized, some would be somewhere in between. And then you had to race because this thing would cool down so fast that it was just not really a comfortable experience. So, you know, Mr. Simrel, thinking outside the box, added this, uh, the warhead tip here. Which does a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, you see these little intakes here which are like little carb holes, I guess. So essentially what happens is you touch this to the, de to the, to the concentrate material and as it vaporizes, the, the vapor goes into the holes here, which then goes up the shaft or as he calls it, the core. Yeah, I mean, really cool concept. I'm, I was very interested to see if it would work as well as he was touting it did before uh, it was released. And boy, howdy, I will tell you this thing does work. Uh, and we'll show you a little later on it working. Um, so then you continue the deconstruction, fitting with the Simrel collection style. You have an intercooler inside of this uh, shaft thing. I like calling it the shaft. It's just kind of funny. Uh, but it is definitely called the core. Uh, so you have the core, which is the threaded uh, tube. Then you have the warhead head, which is where all the action happens. And and Simrel also uh, said already that he was going to try developing different heads so you could clean out your concentrate jars or uh, an induction heater compatible head or maybe different shapes depending on what style of uh, dabber you are, you know, who knows what that guy will come up with. All right, then finishing out going over the device, you have this little bit, which he calls a dabter, uh, which is basically just a play on words for adapter. Uh, this is a really cool little accessory to have for those of you that have a POTV1 or a Healthy Rips um, Rogue or Fury, one of those electronic uh, dry vape devices. This will actually fit inside of the mouthpiece that accepts the glass stem that they sell, which allows you to attach a stem to it. So if you have your favorite uh, Simrel stem, um, you know, or a uh, Vortex, it will allow the whole thing to adapt as a mouthpiece for your favorite dryer vape device like a POTV1. Okay, so then 
I'm running a high flow intercooler inside of this uh, MVS uh, to mess around with the warhead. It was pretty easy to put together. I mean, it wasn't really hard to figure out. I like that it's easy to take apart to clean. I When I first saw it and it came in the tubes, I was kind of worried oh man, like, look at this thing. How am I going to get a Q-tip in there to clean this out? Or, you know, like, how am I going to make sure that this isn't just getting built up with gunk in there? Um, and then I realized it was threaded and that was really cool. Makes it easy for cleaning to just take that part off and run a Q-tip in there. You know, and the other cool thing is the intercooler uh, collects all the reclaim. So to clean it out, you can just pull this, take an alcohol wipe and just pull all that reclaim off and put it back in there and you're good to go. I've been burning the head off if it gets too dirty, but honestly, I've run a lot of concentrates through this and it hasn't really gotten too dirty. And then with the intercooler in this part too, by the time it gets to your mouth, there's really not much reclaim happening uh, there. So yeah, initial thoughts, build, design, Man, he knocked it out of the park with uh, with this right here. So then moving to the other part, the second half to this warhead situation. And really, the, the jelly to this peanut butter that makes it a lot different than a nectar collector. Just off the bat, it has this cool little channel in the top to make this uh, little stand, which I think is going to come you know, really handy when this is hot and you don't necessarily have like a dab mat or something that you can just set it down on. This is a threaded uh, threaded cap. Again, you know, his machining and stuff is always top notch. So this was a satisfying thread off. And then there's this hardy O-ring, uh, which seals this, seals this up, which makes it really cool because what you can do is you can take your concentrates and you can line up little dots on the outside here. Uh, let me use this little tool. So there's this center crater here and then this outer channel. You can line little dots of dabs up here. And then when you're out on the go or, you know, you have like a weekend trip planned or something, you can just flip the little dab into the core, into the center of the little hole here and just do the dab that way, which is really cool because this little channel is dual purpose and I'll show you the other purpose here in, in just a moment. So the shape of this fits together kind of like a mortar and pestle, which does a lot of really cool things when you use this as a dab device. So like a traditional banger where you put the carb cap on top and you use that pressure of the banger to vaporize what's happening inside. This is the same theory. You push against and you use the pressure and the surface area of the dab pushing against this to really use that heat to its maximum potential and vaporize that dab. This thing honestly is like a little pocket banger. I mean, the pressure, the vibe, the way that this all feels once it gets to the lungs is really similar to what you would get out of a banger. And with the intercooler in here and the intercooler in there, it is actually not harsh. I was really worried that this would be a super harsh situation just because it's, you know, a nectar collector and there's not a lot of, and usually with nectar collectors, they have a big glass piece on here, which again is fragile. This thing I am not worried to take this thing, I don't know, camping or wherever, you know, I'm not too worried about dropping this because it's all titanium. Like, I'm not going to take my really expensive quartz banger out and about. And there's just a lot of pluses to this de device as far as durability and build goes. And the fact that you can just break it in half and it stores really nicely inside of um, something like a riot case, uh, which is also really cool. All right, so I've talked about a lot of what you see. Now you see some other things on the desk which just make this job a little nicer. These aren't really necessities. Uh, Puffco hot knife, this is really 
good if you have really sticky material to just drop it right in the center of the dish here. And then uh, this is a turpometer. This is basically just a contact heat sensor that I've been using to touch the end of the warhead here to get to an optimal temperature. And since this has so much mass in the tip, unlike a traditional nectar collector where it's seconds that this is at optimal temperature, you can really dial in the best low temp temp dabs that you want to do, you know, or you can go high temp with this thing and just, it's fun to use this to kind of get the basis of what you like and what you want to experience. And especially on the different materials, I pull away at different times. It is with the turpometer, it is a little bit of a game because as you're, as you're measuring it and then you pull it away, there are a couple seconds that takes you to kind of get lined up to do it. So you pull a little early, it cools down as you're going in for it. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to just uh, do a little bit of concentrate here. To do this, I'm going to use my globe set up with whips which is actually how I've been enjoying doing it. And what's really fun about the MVS is you can just take the stinger, cram it in the whip. Now you have a nice little setup there. We're gonna just load up some of my favorite materials. The other place this uh, really excels is small dabs. Um, for those of you that like to microdose or don't really like taking, you know, huge globs, this does small dabs really efficiently. You might not necessarily get a huge cloud of vapor, but you will taste it. And it's it's a really great experience for small dabs. I've noticed with my Puffco's, sometimes with small dabs, they uh, get a little lost in translation or wasted. And this has been really great for that. So I just have a little bit of uh, material there. And uh, get a little situated. Okay. All right. So I know a big question is going to be um, what type of torches do people use? You can use any um, torch that's a little bigger than a single flame. Uh, out and about on the go, I've been using this uh, double flame pointed torch I've noticed works a lot better uh, and if you use a small torch like this basically you want to turn it on and just point the torch directly at the tip of the warhead to just heat up this this end part uh, sometimes you'll see vapor coming off as you heat it that's normal uh, it's just a little bit of leftover and you can always just burn that off uh, so again if you're using a small torch like this just point it at the end eventually you'll see it comet like the it'll try to turn like a orange glow around it and that's when you know uh it's done and you just wait a couple seconds for it to cool down uh and then go for the um dab you don't really want to go when it's super red hot uh because then you're going to burn your dab and it won't really taste that good uh which is where the turpometer comes into play uh so again this is just a contact temperature sensor um when i'm home I actually really like using this torch. Um, I mean, for me, this is just a little bit of nostalgia from when I was really heavy into bangers and other stuff like that. Uh, with this torch, it heats up a lot faster. You just have to use it right, be a little careful. You don't want to just, you know, throw the warhead or you don't really need to throw the warhead in there and yaw it and just make it super red hot comet. I mean... It, it just, uh, there's no reason for that. It doesn't need it. So when you do this sort of bigger flame, you'll turn the flame on and then just dip the warhead in so it just touches the blue center part. And you'll see it start to comet. And then once uh, you see that, you if you have a turbometer, just go ahead and uh, touch it to the very tip. Not, not so much the side, but the very tip like this. And for me, depending on the concentrates, I'll pull anywhere from... 650 down to 600 and that gives me enough time to get situated and hit the dab when i'm using this whip setup which you definitely don't have to do this is meant to be hit native 
I just close off the airport just to make my life easier. Since I'm getting so much cooling from the glass, I don't really need um, to have the airport open on here. Let me get my little stand ready. Okay. All right, so I think uh, we're ready to do this. So we'll go ahead and give this a rip. And again, like if you're using a flame this big, you don't really need to do that. Just put in the tip so it just touches the blue part because really all you need to do is, is hit that end part. If it starts flaming like that, just let it flame. That's burn off of reclaim from the last, uh, last run. And then once you see it comet, you're good to uh, get the turpometer. And you'll see it does get really hot. So if you like high temp dabs and you just want to go for it, I mean, you can do that with this. So as you see, the temperature does drop quite well. And then right around, for this material, I'm going to pull right around 650. Wow, I mean, the flavor on that was just, wow, the flavor on that was just great. Yeah, and I mean, it cleaned it, cleaned it all up. <laughs> There's barely any left in there. There's a little bit. I could probably do a second pass. I mean, let's do it. Let's see if a second pass really comes up. Let's see what happens. It might find some left in there. And, I, you know, I don't really need to go full temp again. It's already hot. Do that turpometer just to get that real good flavor. Oh no, looks like we need to do a little more, you know, but that's the good thing about the turpometer. You can really, you know, this is a new device for me. I have been using it, but you know, there is a learning curve to some of this stuff. So we're learning together. All right, you can see that little bit of comment happen. It should be hot enough. Let's see this time. Yeah, there you go. Maybe we'll go a little hotter, a little same temp, 650. All right, yeah, it got it all on the first one, one and done. But at, as you saw there at that second one, I went up into this secondary moat. The head is actually the same shape as that secondary moat as well. So if you put like a huge glob of concentrate in the middle and you're pushing in and it overflows into the secondary moat on the second pass, you can do this extra cleanup hit up here making it again really efficient at using all of your dabs you really no 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 dab left behind in this situation cleaning it super easy i just uh take a q-tip and squeeze some iso into there i guess you could dunk the whole thing i mean if you're trying to go do back-to-back -back dabs you know you're just going to want to iso it out i just let it kind of sit in there for a sec and then wipe it all out you know with the quartz banger i was always so worried like oh man if i treat it poorly like is it gonna chaz and all this other stuff i have no worries about this you can use and abuse this thing and i mean i have used and abused this thing and really there's been no no downside to just wrecking it you know high temp or whatever material speaking of material that's the other crazy thing about this right here is with the quartz bangers or my puffco proxy 
full melt temple ball hash bubble bubble hash that's full melt really messes that stuff up it, it makes it really dirty it leaves behind a lot of material which causes chazzing and burning and all that other gnarly stuff um so in comes the warhead where if you take something like temple ball hash let's uh let's change up the material here drop that material in the middle there and just a little ball is enough and again like that mortar pestle you're really going to use the pressure and the shape of this for this material that has more material in it you really want to kind of squeeze the oil out of it so you're going to make this little ball heat up on the first pass you're just going to press down and then on the second pass you'll do the cleanup of all the oil so let's uh give it a go Yeah, just once you start seeing that comet. And I'm actually going to pull this at about 700 just for this material. Wow. I mean, I thought the Vatman was my favorite way to consume hash. This might have just uh, taken the place. I mean, that didn't taste burnt. I mean, as you can see, it's a little brown. And that's the material that I'm talking about. And that's normal for, for hash like that that's got a lot of material. And normally that would be all left on the inside of my banger. And I'd be all grumpy about it because now I got to do like a deep cleaning. But this thing, you can just rub it off on a Q-tip like that. And then same uh, for the dish. Looks like I got it all in one hit. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this out. Just take some ISO and I just kind of squeeze some in there and let it sit for a second. I mean, you know, with any material heavy product it's going to be uh, a little bit extra steps to clean it but i mean better this than my glass quartz banger you know bangers are expensive don't want to mess them up and it just cleans out you get all that extra material out of there and i mean you know like new so yeah i mean i think that's it i'm gonna let the warhead speak for itself Shout out to the Simrel collection for killing it again. Stay lifted. Uh -huh.